This is MathGuy.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to take a look at how to multiply rational expressions. Uh, that just means we're going to multiply fraction, fractions and these fractions have uh, variable expressions in them. So they have X's, basically. Uh, they could have any letters, but uh, traditionally in algebra we use X's. All right, now uh, since this is multiplication, uh, what we'd like to do is factor these expressions. And the reason we're going to factor the expressions is because we can actually cancel uh, like factors from the numerator and the denominator. So we first have to factor. So in order to understand this, of course, you have to understand factoring. Like, for instance, there's a couple different types of factoring going on in this problem. Uh, the most basic type is with this pro uh, particular problem. These two terms have an x in common, so I'm going to factor out an x. And also I can divide these numbers both by 3. Okay, so what I'm going to do is something which is akin to the reverse distributive property. So I think 3x times something is 3x squared, and I think 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times something is 6x, that's 3x times 2. And of course it's a positive 2. So once we've factored, and in this particular problem we've definitely have factored the problem, I'm going to can or cross this out so I don't use it again because it is totally factored. All right, let's try the next one. Now this next one is a bit of a different type of factoring. For this problem we have to think of two numbers that multiply to be negative 12, but then the numbers also have to add up to be negative 1. Okay, so the reason why we're doing this differently is because these three terms don't have anything in common, so that's why we're using this different technique. Uh, so when you have a trinomial, no terms in common, you play this little game. You'd say, and this, of course this works when this coefficient here is a 1. Eh, you can always read up the mathguide.com about half, how to factor. We have tons of uh, lessons on that. Uh, all right, so two numbers that multiply to be negative 12 add up to be negative 1. Well, of course, 3 and 4 come to mind. All right, now which one has to be the negative 1? Because one of them is negative because they multiply to be a negative. If they add up to be a negative 1, there's got to be more negatives than there are positives. So those two multiply to be negative 12 and add up to be negative 1. All right, again, cross out the old guy. We're done with it. All right, let's factor another one. So again, this is a trinomial with no terms and or no common factors amongst all three terms. So we play the same game. We think what multiplies to be negative 10 adds up to be negative 3. And of course, 5 and 2 come to mind. Okay, so let's see. Which one's negative? Well, there's got to be more negatives than positives because they're going to add up to be negative 3. Okay, that works just fine. Cross that out. Okay, so now that can't be factored. It's in its most factored form. All right, now at this point, we are going to cross out all those factors that are the same. And you can play this little game with the numerator and the denominator. Like for instance, I see that I've got an x plus 3 and an x plus 3. So I'm dividing both of those top and bottom. It only works with tops and bottoms. Okay, so in other words, I see an x plus 2 and an x plus 2. I'm going to cancel those guys as well. All right, is there anything else? Well, let's see. I don't see any common factors. Okay, so I, the x minus 5, don't have another x minus 5. Do I have just an x? Nope, I don't have just an x. So there's nothing else I can cancel. So what's the final answer? Let's see, if I multiply all these numerators together, 1 times 3 times 1 is 3. x, so we got an x there. All right, in the denominator, what I have? I have these two guys. I got x minus 5 and x minus 4. So I got x minus 5 and x minus 4. There you have it. That's the answer to the problem. Nothing else you could do. Okay, that's example 1. We are now going to go to example 2. 
this is example two of multiplying rational expressions. All right, so here we have it. We have another problem, and this other problem has a variety of other things to factor. So let's begin. Uh, all right, let's factor this. We've seen one of these before. We play the game where we try to think of uh, the two numbers that multiply to be 4 but add to be negative 2. So that, of course, I'm thinking 2 and 2. And they both have to be negative. Yep, they multiply to be 4, add up to be negative 4. Uh, here's another one. Let's see. Uh, two numbers that multiply to be 12 but add up to be negative 8. Let's see, 6 and 2 come to mind. Yep, they're both negative. They multiply to be a positive, add to be a negative 8. Uh, this one has a 0x. See, there's no middle term, a 0x. So they have to add up to be 0. So it's still got to be 2 and 2 for this one. Except in this case, 1's negative, 1's positive. They multiply to be negative 4, add up to be 0. And the last one here, now this one's a different type of factoring. They, these two terms have something in common. They both have a 2 in common and an x. So I'm going to take out that common factor. So 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 2 is 4x. All right, now, of course, once I have everything factored, I always like to cross out the old stuff so I don't confuse it with any of the new stuff that gets... Uh, canceled. All right, so let's begin the canceling. How does the cancellation work? Well, I pick a, a numerator and denominator that have the same factors. Okay, like here I see x minus 2, x minus 2. They get canceled. Uh, let's see, I see another x minus 2 and another x minus 2. Well, that's it. I don't see anything else that's the same. I don't see anything else. I see a 2, but that's part of an x plus 2, and that's a 2, but that's, you know, it's not the same thing. It's not exactly the same. So there's really nothing else to cancel for this problem. So I'm left with a bunch of factors. So what are the factors that are left? Let's see. In the numerator, I'm going to have an x plus 2 and an x minus 6. x plus 2, and I have an x minus 6. All right, let's see. Now what's left in the numerator? I have a 2x and an x minus 2. And there you have it. There's my final answer for that problem. All right, make sure you go back to mathguide.com. Check out all, our, all of our interactive quizzes, instructional videos, activities, and so forth. Take care.